Hi, my name is Johnny Nunez. I'm a celebrity photographer from New York City. Uh, I asked God for an idea before I was about to become a professional And the next morning when I woke up, I saw a camera dangling in the air. I went to reach for it and my hand went through it. And then a peace came over me. And it was at that very moment homeless living in a car, although I was sleeping at someone's house that night, I realized photography was my calling from the Lord. Man, you know, traveling the world with Damon Dash and Kanye West and John Legend, being the personal photographer to Jay-Z, LeBron James, Michael Jordan, Spike Lee, Oprah Winfrey, uh, just to name a few. One of the most memorable uh, moments I would say would possibly be when I caught the shot of Jay-Z uh, meeting uh, Michael Jordan for the first time. But I had no idea that I was actually introducing them for the first time. And I caught the photograph. That was in uh, Capital on Bowery. I asked Jay, could I get a photo of him with Jordan? He told me, you asked that man. I went to Michael Jordan. I said, Jordan, you mind if I get a shot of you with Jay-Z? He said, sure, where is he? I said, right this way. I said, oh, Jay, Jordan. And they looked at each other, shook hands, hugged, talked for a minute, captured those moments. And that's just one, one, that's just one introduction. I have many others. Yeah, so we were in Jamaica for a concert called Sashi 2000. Shout out to my man, Romy. He'll be home soon. Shout out to my man, Lionel. He'll be home soon. Um... They flew me down to Jamaica to, to be the photographer for a big concert. My man Romy had so much money that he flew over all the talent and paid them what their price was. Basically, uh, there was still a little bit of tension between the West Coast and the East Coast and Snoop was on one corner of the room with his uh, dog pound and on the other side of the, the green room or, you know, Back, backstage was Junior Mafia. I was already cool with Little Kim, Little C's, and the whole Junior Mafia. And Snoop, I've seen him around a few times, but from his music and his videos, he seemed like a really cool guy. So I went over to Little C's because I had a better relationship with him and I asked him, um, C's, you think I could get a shot with you and Snoop Dogg? And C said, Yo, Jay, I don't know, bro. You know how things are right now. This is maybe, maybe two years after the death of Biggie. And I said, you're right, you know? And I remembered Tupac and Snoop were very close, so there could still be tension there. And it would be whack if we got into a fight in a Caribbean island and we are all African uh, people of color, you know? So he said, if you ask him, I'm cool with it. So I went over to Snoop and I said, yo, Snoop, you mind if I get a photo of you? And he looked at me, yo, I'm cool. If the homie's cool with it, I'm cool with it. And so I said, yo, C's. He's like, yo, what's up? Snoop, C's, can I get that shot? They looked at each other for a minute. And at the same time, they both extended hands of peace. They then hugged, talked about how they never had any beef with each other. And then Romy came through with two hefty bags filled with And they both were just so happy they began to roll choppers right there. They started to D-twig or whatever you want to call it, separate and they started rolling these gigantic Cheech and Chong smoking it. Those are the photos you don't see yet, but those are in the same collection as the shirt. So with Aaliyah, there was a party in Brooklyn. Jay-Z was throwing a birthday party for his mom. And I was like so upset because I get there and my, my, my digital camera's battery died. So I'm like, oh my God, what am I gonna do? So I ran to a drugstore, said, do you have any portable, uh, not portable, d disposable cameras? So I got one of them little Kodak joints, ran up there, and I said, Leah. She was like, what's up, Johnny? I'm like, chilling, you always good to, and she gave me a kiss and a hug. And um, a little inside story. When I was dating my wife, and we would go into church on Sundays, 
I just so happened to be walking down Broadway in the 70s and we just left church and there was Aaliyah with her mom, no security, no bodyguards, no publicists, no agents, no attorneys, just her and her mom just walking, hugging. So they both had each other in a hugging position and we just bumped into each other. When we bumped into each other, Aaliyah immediately introduced me to her mom and I introduced them to my, my wife, which at the time was just my girlfriend. And she gave my wife a big hug and said, you got a good guy right here. Johnny's always on the spot and I love him. Mom, this is my guy. And she gave me a, a really tight hug and I said goodbye to her. Um, little did I know, I think that that was the last time I saw her, you know? But back to the story. As she was leaving, I caught the shot that you see on her shirt. So I'm proud to say Outkast before anybody knew who they was in New York, I got a call from my man, Seth, and he had started a magazine called Refrigerator. He said, Johnny, I, I would like to shoot the cover of my first issue with an, a group out of Atlanta that I believe is gonna be big. And I said, sure, you know. So I went to Times Square where Big Boy and Andre were. They were in a hotel. I don't know what you call this machine, but Andre had like a little tiny suitcase that actually had a record player for 45s and somehow it was connected to like a mixer. So he was, I guess, sampling in the room and he had one of those like head wraps like Nick Cannon wears. And I met them, we went through the city of Times Square and I shot Big Boy and him that made it to the cover of the magazine. And through, from that moment, it was just a, 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 a great brotherhood. Andre and Big Boy, L.A. Reid, and the, the whole entire Atlanta was like just family to me. So that picture I took, I believe, was at Virgin Record Stores in New York City when they were in Times Square. So Eve, it was a... Uh, um, at the video shoot for I had just shot her with the locks and they walked away and I said, yo, he's staring right there. She gave me that look because the sun was going down, I remember. And she had like a shimmering silver uh, blouse and the sunlight hit her, her blouse. It's my girl. So Big Pun, I believe he either uh, invested in a barbershop in the Bronx, and that was like a grand opening. So Diego was there, Fat Joe was there, everybody was getting their shape up, getting their face, getting their, their cuts. And Pun walked in, he gave Noriega a kiss on the forehead. No, excuse me, Fat Joe came and gave Big Pun a kiss on the forehead when he was getting a cut. And uh, I'll never forget that moment, man. Pun was a cool cat. He always had this look like he was thinking. So you never knew what was in what was in his mind, you know. That's what I loved about him. He was not just a tough guy. He really was a tough guy. Like he was nice with their hands, and he was a triple threat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So everybody in the world, stay safe. Um, I'm praying for us all. Hopefully, we'll find a cure for this virus. Wear gloves. Wear masks. I, I got mine just not wearing it just for this interview, but uh, I wish everyone peace and safety.